gauge around it, and they were looking for mid game, like bam, Trinity Force Corky, force team fight to try and win. Sadly for them, Fnatic had a pure team by com that just yep. like killed the 80 carries very easily, so it got a little bit too far into the game. Fnatic kind of ran over them towards the end, and they couldn't win, but they had a good start to that game. G2, favorite late game. Actually played fairly slow most of the time. Schalke game yesterday was an hour long, but it was, to be fair, an hour of a lot of exciting yes. gameplay. So what you do, I, I know they can play towards early game, but in this meta, and because it's so early on in the split for them, they have favored the more late game uh, kind of comps. Okay. And I think that's still going to be the direction for them. I mean, it suits the patch, right? We're still on 8.2, ladies and gentlemen. Galio, Rakan, as well as Gnar taken off the table by G2 Esports. Unicorns of Love have responded with Rise as well as Tom Kench. And I think the one thing Shibi does see when he looks at me is that I hate Tom Kench. <laughs> so he bans it for me every time. And uh, I really like that. Deficio, that's collusion. You're not meant to say that on board. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> He's looking at me. He's reading my body language, which is no Tom Kenj. And what is your body language saying? First pick wise now. Uh, Azir is up. Perks has played. They did this Zoe yesterday. as well. Gangplank instead locked in. Yeah, they did this yesterday here. I, I like how you saved me because there's a lot of first pick choices, so I could say something wrong. But you just, you know, continuing to talk. I never get to make a prediction before the pick is locked in, and I can be like, uh, Gangplank. Uh. You continue then. Where would you like to take us? Well, uh, I think Vladimir would be a good choice. Wow! <laughs> Just got locked in. That's crazy. Sijuani is also available for Cold if he wants to play the tank. Alistar was what we saw yesterday. Kalista is still here. No one wants to play Kalista in Europe for some reason. Even though Kalista Alistar is amazing. You can just do it, but she keeps losing whenever she gets picked. Yeah, definitely not uh, great. 0% uh, win rate leading up to this but week. This is the game where Samwix will grab Kalista and win a game. Yankos sends his regards and may his not believe coach is telling him to pay you. Sichuani. He's saying, no, 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 please, please, please. I want to carry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's different. Not a carry. Oh, oh it is locked in. in. Zier. I like it. All right, well, uh, play around perks. Normally works pretty well if you are G2 Esports. Great way to do it is pick Nuno Azir. Funny enough, most junglers don't want to play Nuno. They don't actually consider him that strong. He's by no means broken. So he's left open in most pick and ban phases. But this one, he's grabbed very early just to play the Nuno Azir comp. And what is the response from the Unicorns of Love? How do they play into uh, this? Of course, like we've it. seen the Vigar into Isaiah yes. multiple times before, and Exile's gonna run it this time around. So remember, early game, you do not beat the Azir with this pick. No. Late game, yes. the giant stun from the Vigar is very effective, as I was burping while actually <laughs> saying that. Uh, very effective <laughs> against uh, Azir, who wants to stand still and like auto attack, and you can try and like zone him off. And of course, you have the one-shot potential uh, later on. Nuno C, however, if they do not get destroyed instantly by this engage comp of Alistar diving in, ult from Vagar, of course, uh, a Vladimir who will reach the backline, if they survive that, they will have way more consistent DPS. Oh. But you gotta survive the initial engage. So the shotgun approach from Unicorns of Love, will they find the kills? If I recall correctly, it was Betsy that played that Vagar really well a couple weeks ago. So we the first time that Exile has run that pick. Oh, this Tarek ban is so smart because they're playing against, a, again, a composition that wants long team fights, a lot of hits, kiting around. Tarek ult is great at stopping the initial all-in from a, a comp like the one we see from Unicorn, so that's a really, really smart ban. Could have been a great choice though for G2. And the Callista, a really, really smart ban as well, denying that Callista Alistar. It's going to be Tristana instead as Varus was the last ban from G2 Esports. And if this Ezreal ben. gets picked in, Deficio, Ezreal is 0-4 on the week and 2-7 on the split in Europe. Everyone wants to be the hero that gets the first win on patch oh. 8.2 after the Ezreal and Klepto nerfs happened. Yanan wants to be that guy. It's a kite comp. There is so much kiting on G2's side. It is a lot of the late game, as we talked about coming into this draft, that's the kind of the style they want to play. Unicus are love for trying to do a bit of what Fnatic did to them yesterday. They want more engaged. They want tools to like one shot a target just when the fight starts. That's more engaged once again. And Orn, while his ulti is great as long range engage, it's hard to use Orn effectively as a pure disengage support because you your main CC when it comes to like people running at you is gonna be either if they're next to a wall and you can charge into them, yes. which won't happen very often. The other one is of course your long range ult, but that is a slow one. So when these guys are jumping in instantly and trying to kill one guy within a second or two, <laughs> Orn can't always peel against that. The shotgun shell approach for Unicorns. Will they find their targets? 
I'm trying to look to see where our social media guy is because I think we have to ask a question. Will Hyanen and G2 pick up the first win for Ezreal in Europe on 8.204 after those nerfs to Fischio? It's the last game of the week here for us in Europe. And we have Nunu Azir, the comp that was going to take over the stage last week. Going to be rounding out this week. Was only picked once. Yep. The Nunu Azir, and it lost. It wasn't particularly exciting. But this man on your screen is exciting. Yankos hey. will, will make Willump do wonders. And when we saw Perks and Yankos together, we knew <laughs> synergy was going to be important. Playing around each other is going to be important. Kind of hoped it was, you know, Lee Sin and LeWang. <laughs> it is now Nuno and Azir, so it's a little bit more late game focused, but it still counts. I still think on Unicorn's side, enough engage, plus a great game from Exile, they can beat G2. All right, let's see what the Unicorns can do. Deadly, deadly serious on the side of the Power Pink Ponies. One win and six losses here in the Spring Split. It has been a tumultuous start. And that's normally not a sentence you hear put together right there. Deadly serious Pink Power Ponies. But that's what you find in the Unicorns of Love. They are being juxtaposed by excitement and energy. The G2 Esports roster is definitely hyped for this game. We're loading up, ladies and gentlemen, here for G2 taking on the Unicorns of the Lab. The final game of the week before we head to the post-game lobby and then set ourselves up for a handover to the North American LCS. Classic dematerializer on the Vega here. You know in the early game it can be a little bit rough in terms of pushing. You can't really match what Perks can do on the Azir, so you have to just kind of accept that you will push back in the lane. And Dematerializer can definitely help you uh, keep it up. Yankus. Oh, no. So annoying already. It, it's so frustrating. He hasn't laughed yet, though. If, if Yankus laughs on this Nunu skin, I hope the observers catch it. Much like Cowbell Alistair, which mm. Toto has failed to select. Oh. I, I, and, you know, I can't forgive him for that. But we need to hear that ha, ha, ha uh, when Yankos decides to do it. All right, for now, it's a wonder dancing in the top lane instead. Meanwhile, on uh, Unicorn's side, the Vladimir pick worked well against him yesterday when it came to reaching the back line, kill the AD carries, Exile, and Samix in that game. So why not? Grabs it for himself this time and says, you know what, my job is now to reach Yannin and Perks. Okay. It can be a little bit difficult to do because, of course, very slippery champions, both the Azir and the Ezreal, very long range as well. Ezreal will go for Iceborne Gauntlet, so if you don't get to pull under that yeah. one, suddenly you get slowed down. But if they land the initial engage first from Zac or Alistar, follow up with stun from Exile, you're keeping people in place for multiple seconds, and then White Knight is going to get in. But I mean, I guess that requires, you know, vision, timing, communication. They're going to read the setup well. The man on your screen, Cold, he was one of the guys you're going to look at. He had an interesting tower dive yesterday. It didn't go well. He's now going up against Yankos on the Nunu. When we look down some of the statistics, kill participation at 1,500% for Yankos, the first Blood King. Holds true to his title. Worth uh, mentioning that G2 do not get a lot of early kills. Doesn't matter, still counts. <laughs> it still counts. <laughs> it makes it a little bit easier to have 100% kill participation as a jungler. I believe he's currently on Dragon at level 3. Took the Blast Con over. We have pushed in the bottom lane. That's one of the great things about this Orn Ezreal combination is it can very often push in the early game. Ezreal is still fairly strong as an early laner despite the nerfs that happened to his Q where he lost some early damage on it. So with them pushing bot, and as we talked about, twice already, Azir pushing in Vagar. It actually allows Yankos to go for this very early Drake. Start to hold my breath ever so slightly. Gonna need a little bit of help, and then it works out. You can see the mechanics on display of a truly top tier LCS jungler. The great thing about Nuno is no skill shots. Uh, exactly, you, that's why it's perfect for Yankos. You cannot mess up. Eh, that's, that's not true. Not, not. You can mess up Blood Boil. <laughs> That's the only one. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a record for you. It is truly worthy of the quick stat title. That was the earliest dragon of the 2018 European LCS, and it was a Cloud Drake. Those two, two sentences will never be pieced together again, <laughs> because nobody goes for Cloud Drake that early. I like the combo, combo from them. Oh, let's see what happens down here. What did? What happens now? What did's in a lot of trouble. He gets done. I'm so excited by quick stats and first blood is what's gonna happen. One more shot. Oh, so what's so gonna happen? Savix! What the hell was that? Ah, I think the minions blocked him, so he suddenly started turning around and he didn't get the last hit. Samax 
normally would probably just flash for the kill there, but I think he might have gotten too far away because he was stuck oh, in a minion wave. That would suck so badly. Maybe, maybe if we can get a replay of that, we can see if he could have picked up that first block. But hold that thought, Totro decides to fancy a shot. Yarnin's in a little bit of trouble, forced to flash away. All right. That means every summoner spell blown on the side of G2. So early push from the Orn and Ezreal, but they just got punished. Both of them lost both summoners. All started with Wadid got too close to that Alistar who could then headbutt him back into the turret. Didn't even have to use flash or anything. Uh, Exile in the mid lane does get a trade on perks. Uh, Cold is here. Charging at the slingshot. Oh, look at that. Fancy footwork from perks. Prediction or anticipated. Sidesteps the stretching strike. He even manages to send a comet back to the face of Exile. Doesn't use a single summoner. I like the move here from Perks, knowing that if he just dodges around the nug up, he's gonna be fine. And then he walks <laughs> into the Fate Horizon. I think he was playing a little bit of bait there. So, still, the way G2 drafted with, you know, pushing mid, pushing bot, and a Nunu makes a ton of sense for the early Drake. They will try and go for another one when the second one spawns, and it's gonna be a mountain. So, sucks for them, it's a cloud first, not like an ocean Drake, but let's see. So, we did walks in. Gets knocked up, knocked back into the turret, takes one tower shot, and now Samax gets easy trade. Let's see what happens. He follows, he follows, and then, no, actually, he could just probably have followed up and flashed and hit him, but maybe just got out of range at the very end. Oh, so disappointing. We'll see whether or not unicorns can turn that one around. I mean, look, early advantage at a G2. And of course, once today's show wraps up, the European LCS postgame lobby will kick off. And we'll be discussing whether or not G2 or UOL picked up the win. Uh, it's a cull, by the way, for Hyanen. Perks is able to walk out of the event horizon. Tia cull, Hyanen, in for the long game here. Of happy course, to scale, happy to buy some time. I was kind of missing uh, gold to buy anything useful uh, after the tier. Yeah. It's already purchased from his side. Cole is always fine. Definitely doesn't hurt him that much in terms of laning phase. XL uh, keeps playing very aggressive. He's like, they're kind of swapping positions here. Perks is suddenly on the other side. And same for XL. Uh, luckily, XL does have his jungler just outside of the screen. Now Cold enters, and that's why he can play so aggressive towards the bottom side. And second game in a row where Cold is spending all his time in the early game around Exile. Get this man through the laning phase, yes. and then he can start doing some work. I mean, that was also Exile last year. His laning phase was weak, but his team fights were good. And we'll see whether or not Exile can set themselves up. Jankos gets pulled towards the Raptor camp. Those chickens eaten alive by Exile and Cold. And we probably have Gathering Storm on Exile. And now he's oh. in on the other side. Yeah, there's the cleanse as well as the command arise and attack. Continues to go forward. Now Exile Exile's got matter. some support. What did comes in with a volcanic rupture and Bellows breath forces Exile to flash away. Ignite was used. Exile's run for his life. Now Perks is in trouble. Down below 100 HP. Ignite is ticking. Cold. Perks stays alive a few seconds longer. But there's the passive pop. Cold in trouble. First blood available and picked up by Yankos. Now all of a sudden Totoro's in trouble. He's going to get the stun. Well, Samux has arrived. Teleport being channeled in Exile. Returns to the fight. But G2 get the kill. All right. First blood for G2. Perks was very low in that fight, but he just got under the turret. Wadid trying to hold the wave for now. <laughs> Exile will just kind of hit him a little bit. Yeah. Force him away. Exile's ulti was there, so... Uh, that would have hurt. Could have tried to do something. Let's see uh, the play against so Exile and Cold coming from behind. Perks does get stunned, has to use early cleanse, but now because Cold jumps in, not expecting the cleanse to come down from Perks, he ends up missing the first knockup. And then Exile is low on HP, low on mana, so he can't really stay and fight. And it is technically at this point a 2v3, because Perk's having to flash away and walk away, but Cold got smaller and smaller, and sadly in the end ran out of HP and ended up dropping down. I think the initial plan of going for the play onto Perks was fine, but then when Perks can cleanse the stun and Cold still flies in where he was positioned before, yeah. and is then forced to flash the wall to, to make a play happen, Unicorns ended up going a little bit too deep. And they get punished for it. Um, it ends up being pretty sizable, in fact. Uh, nearly 2,000 gold. If you look at advantages in pretty much every single role for G2 Esports. Wonder, of course, farming up with that bonus gold, thanks to Gangplank. And Kleptomancy doing so, so well in lane. And G2 continue the trend of very good early games. Look, over the last few weeks, uh, plus 1,000 gold in 15 minutes, they've had a lead in six out of seven games despite losing three of those. Yeah, I mean, mainly G2 has been losing games in the late game. Uh, not 
recently they've actually gotten a lot better at, at closing out games and also winning late game fights. This comp again, we already talked about a yes. ton of scaling. It scales so well. So it's like early pushing lanes from mid and bot lane, and then a lot of scaling. So they have some early game in their favor because of the pushing power, and then suddenly they have the late game team fight. But on the other side with Unicorns, we talked about this already, it's the dive to back line. Yeah. Chain the CC from Zach, Alistair, and Gage into stun from Vagar. Let White Knight be a carry in the back line. There's a lot of members here who can reach Perks or Yanan, or at least try to do it. So Unicorns, when they group as five, which is gonna be the name of the game for them, 100%, they can very easily catch G2. Well, let's see how well they execute it. Before we get there, Deficio, I have a question for you. Uh, Yangos is level 6, so Absolute Zero unlocked. He's currently put 3 points into his consume. Where does he go from there? What do you think of skill orders on Nunu? Because I've heard some differing opinions. Well, uh, I see a lot of Nunus just fully max out consume, and then max W after. Do have to see if there's a fight starting. And then just ma max W second. Don't actually max the E at all, simply because the extra little bit of damage and slow it gives you is not worth it compared to what Blood Boil, when you do put some ranks into it, will give you. Of course, more stats for your mid laner, and more importantly, the minimum amount of AP you actually will give them with the 40% increase, yep. it goes up when you put more ranks to, it, ranks to it. It's 40 at rank 1, so that's not a lot, a lot in the late game. See what happens, bot lane. Tonor is very aggressive. He is indeed. Support was there, though. Uh, Cold and Exile coming down. And I'll keep a close eye on Yankos. Well, he no should max Q. Put... Just max Anywhere Q else. first and then max W, because you need the Q for objectives and farming and all that. Well, there we go. Gonna find Exile. Can start to channel Absolute Zero if he wants to. No, gets the summon of Flash. We'll be happy with that. Teleport's being used by Wadid into the mid lane. Oh, can he ult? There's no Flash on Exile. Call of the Forge God is available, but the Unicorns can flank and surround G2 Esports. The Herald is summoned. Now kissed with perks. There's the Forge God. Not gonna find a knockup just yet. Will, in fact, on the return, as the Rift Herald gets a chunk of the tower, but G2, they walk away with their lives. If it wasn't for the backup around mid here, then Wadid for sure would have instantly altered onto Exile and picked up a kill. But of course, Cold and White Knight, they expected it. They were waiting around. I think Cold mainly tried to interrupt the channel on the Rift Hell right there, not really looking for Got a it. kill. Seeing as, you know, there were multiple G2 members already there, and Exile was so low. Good trade, top from White Knight as well. One of the guys we're really looking at on the side of Unicorns of Love because he had a good game yesterday. Yes. We've seen him, you know, starting to shine a little bit more in the top lane. And this Unicorns of Love team, they do need someone who can win laning phase. Yeah. It's not White Knight in this game specifically, but it's been one of the problems for them. They don't really have a single lane that just kind of always does really well early on. Let's see what happens in the play. Gang onto Exile, of course, Nuno Gangs mainly just slow a guy down. Yes. The damage is not really there to do much else. And now, I think Wadid is like, okay, I can get a kill. But then they realize, okay, there are multiple members around and Cold does fly in. Sad the frame comes in a little bit too late. Uh, we'll just get a bit of damage on perks and that's still fine. Gets a cleanse. And he ends up then walking away and Exile stays alive. Walks away and no further kills. To Fisher, you talked about sort of winning lane. Um, and despite things starting well for Samix down in that bottom lane, Hyanen is farming up well, 28 CS away from that cult. And I do have uh, another piece of information for you. Do you remember I asked the social team and Twitter whether or not you think Ezreal will pick up a win? 52% of you do not think Ezreal will work for Hyanen. Haters. They are Twitter. then predicting UOL to win despite being down 2k. But that is maybe just the weight of Ezreal on this patch. Does it count if G2 wins but Hyanen plays awful? Well, yeah, because it's a team game. Sure, yeah, but then did I mean, the, that's literally what the backpack did, is for. Did the Ezreal work then? Well, uh, we'll have to ask social talk to the internet. That's another question. Let's see what happens because Yarnin is in trouble. Whether or not 52% of you will be right, he's the target. Yarnin goes golden thanks to the use of that stopwatch. Buys a few seconds longer. Exile chunks him down with a primordial burst. Absolute zero is channeled from Exile in the back end. And Exile is the target. Yeah, you buys a couple extra targets. And Perks is the man that gets a kill. So they trade one for one. Despite a couple of summoners. So we've seen this a few times now from Unicorns. They're trying to make a play in the bot lane with the Alistar. Obviously, you want to get a kill into the first third of the game, but it, it was a very long dive. The stopwatches, again, they make this difficult because they buy so much time for defending team. Notice how Yanen, when the initial engage happens, uses stopwatch, again, buys more time. Yankos can join, Perks can run from mid, TP can get channeled, and Exile, he's not getting out. Save your own stopwatch. There's no way out. Like, there's. Legit zero way out yeah. to, to save it. Don't use it later when it might be more useful. Uh, question. 
What do you think of UOL's execution of that dive? Because it's the first taste of how their comp wants to work together and combo the abilities. I think they hoped to get a knock up on the Ezreal into a perma stun, so he couldn't use Starbot and you could burst him down quicker. Because okay. then this dive could have worked much better for them, and you certainly didn't have to wait for Starbot to run out, and Yankees wouldn't be there as early, Perks couldn't roam and actually be there in time to pick up a kill or at least a return kill on the way out, because Unicorns, even if they got the first kill, gotta make sure that they can actually get out again yeah. uh, and not just suddenly get ganked from the side. So, I think the play in itself makes a lot of sense, but the stopwatches make it so hard to execute it. And of course, also a TP coming down. All right, Perks has been able to walk out a lot of those event horizons, forced to use the Emperor's Divide to buy some time. And as we approach 15 minutes on the clock, despite running at Perks over and over, Perks is up 30 CS. Uh, G2 are up nearly 3,000 gold, and not a tower has fallen. G2 are just farming very well, and. They're using all their gold-gaining abilities to their advantage. But Exile again tries to force Perks out of lane so he gets some damage on the turret. Uh, so far it is down to 50% HP, and now with the stopwatch gone from Yannan, Unicorns Love can try their play in bot lane again, and right. this time instant kill the Israel. It is definitely an option for them. There is TP on Exile's side. He's looking for another trade. He's currently 1v2. All right, Absolute Zero has been used by Yankos. Here comes Cold in from the back end. Let's bounce available. Let's kiss Perks and Yankos. Delivers Yankos closer to Exile, but he's got not a lot left to work with. Sand Soldiers are arisen. Oh, that TP's going to get interrupted. Sent forward. It was, in fact, interrupted. Let's see how Totoro escapes with his life. Wadid chases forward, connects into the wall. Don't get many opportunities like that. Wadid continues to run forward. The Forge God is available. Whoa! It's a buster shot! All those oh, saves his God. life! Blast Totoro! Oh, the Blast Code not going to be enough to buy time. Now Cold and Exile coming from the back. Perks is blown up! Burst down primordially! Kiara needs to get over the wall. Got Summoner Flash available. He's looking for another re-engage. And this fight was messy. Yeah, but that was a two for one in favor of the Unicorns of Love. It all started in the mid lane. Exile! He went nuts, 1v2, he knew Cold was coming, but he took so much damage, he ended up having to back away, and then suddenly in the bottom lane, a fight breaks out, well played by Samex and Totoro here, and actually knocking Wadid back, so he suddenly couldn't find a way out, and then they got a kill on him, and managed to then wait for the rest of the team to show up and get another kill, this time on to Perk. So, this Vega pick in the mid lane, while he's definitely not winning on CS, he's constantly fighting Perks. And he knows the Nuno pick is not that scary. He doesn't have to fear the ganks in the mid lane. So he's feeling confident. Okay, interrupt of course, or cancel on TP instantly. And now it looks like everything is in favor of G2. Early trade on the Alistar. Yangus comes down first, but look at this one here. Once Odin gets knocked back and then shot back oh, as man. well. He can't get out. And the stopwatch this time buys time in favor of the Unicorns of Love and Exile gets to show up. Fish, you're so close to being a Cody Sun, but not quite. <laughs> Stotoro is taken out. Good team fight. It also means tower first blood for the Unicorns of Love. So that's going to close that gold deficit ever so slightly. Unfortunately for them, it is at the cost of a Mountain Drake. So that's going to help out. I mean, Nunu, Gangplank, Azir, yeah, yeah. Ezreal, oh, Mountain yeah. Drake. Yeah, yeah. This is terrifying around Baron. Baron dies in like two seconds, basically. Maybe a little bit more, but it will die very quickly. That's the point of, of the two seconds here. Exile and Totoro. That was an optimistic lane. Forge God. It was, it was. There was no flash on the Vagar. Yep. Uh, so maybe if it connected, uh, they could have done something. I want to see Exile look for more fights. Disrespect Yankus as much <laughs> as you want. Walk straight into perks and just take the trades because at the moment, he's doing pretty fine. He is indeed. Uh, pretty good for Exile 2 1 0. Uh, Deficio, can we play the mini game of how many stacks does Vagar have? thanks to his Baleful Strike. While you're looking at that, Yankos has uh, maxed his W. So going the expected route. And yeah, currently gained 138 extra AP. And we're only 18 minutes in. If Exile can use it, uh, 138 bonus AP perks, forced to use his ultimate. That's going to be all he needs to survive. And now to get that bot lane tower, but look at this here. Wadid is teeping in behind them. We get another fight. I love uh, it. The Forge God's not available. True Shot Barrage flies across the UOL. Backline gets some damage down. Yankos continues to 
bait and taunt the unicorns, but it's a tower trade. Bottom for middle. And Jiju can go for another turret right now because Unicorns a lot will have to recall, at least get some damage on it. Buff up their Z up. Look at the damage from Perks right now. Smack, 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 smack. This tower's going down quickly. <laughs> tower will fall. It's a two for one trade. G2 Esports come out with the macro play, but where is the teleport going? Saw that one being channeled. White Knight actually cancelled it. I'm assuming that's what the observers are trying to show us there. Decided against it. So, G2, 3,000 gold up as we get close to 20 minutes on the clock. Two item spikes continuing to grow, and Unicorns, and they're losing some control. They are, definitely, but they need one fight in their favor, like this one. All right, that's going to be a pretty easy kill here onto what did. Nice it's bounces, use that one. Nice that's one. another double kill for Exile. And look at G2 scattered. Oh, and this is why we love Alistar, because you can make some sick plays. You can set up carry so well. That was a great flash knock up. Yes, Trevor. That's you exactly are, what standing and you wanted in my to face. see. Deficio, you wanted to see the shotgun comp, the perma stun into the insta kills. Exactly. That's why they drafted this comp. It's all about comboing together multiple types of CC into burst damage. That's what they're looking for. I remember talking to Sheepy a year ago about drafting. He always said combo things. That's what matters to him. So stun into a knock up, into another knock up. Great setup between Cold and Totoro here, and Exile picks up a double kill. And Trevor, you just said Unicorns of Love, they're struggling, you know, it's kind of falling apart right yeah. now. And I just said, like, Trevor, Trevor, calm down. They need one fight in their favor. And what happened? They got the fight. They got the fight in but their favor. Is it enough or do they need more? Because there's still 3,000 gold down. But they need more, but they're going to get more. Okay. It's okay. impossible for this draft to not get more team fights. <laughs> It's impossible. I'm going to quote you on that. It's impossible. I am not fine saying to that. To get more team fights. Whether they'll be good or bad is irrelevant. That was not part of your statement. So we'll see how well Cold and Totoro can combo. Because let's give Cold some credit. His uh, Zach stretching strikes have been good. He's been around where most uh, of the action has been. He's been active. For we sure. can criticize some of the jumps. Those slingshots have not always found their targets. But the follow up immediately after has. And Cold is one of the guys that. I had a lot of expectation on looking at this Unicorn squad because he is the leader, he is the voice, he is one of the most experienced. And we'll see what he can do with his team. Unicorns take another tower there to fish in the top lane. And I want to see what a good friend down the bot lane is going to do this Alistar because he's not decided to upgrade uh, after his Tarkon sprays. He's just sitting on what he gets from the quest, like one upgrade and then sit on the 500 quest bonus with the early sidestone with three stacks. It does allow you again to save roughly a thousand gold, Trevor. Okay. And just rush a real item. Like what? What real item would you expect Sodoro to go for? See, I would love Righteous Glory coming in from him just to have even more engage on his side. And I want to see if that is what he's aiming for uh, at the moment. I mean, it looks like it. Getting close to it. Um, around two and a half thousand ish gold for that Righteous Glory. Totoro currently sitting on 600 with Ruby Crystal, Sapphire Crystal, and that Bracer. So getting close. Uh, I'm not going to try to do math on stream because I always mess it up. And while we're talking about itemization, Unicorns with the tower lead, they've closed that gold gap. They've got some very deep vision into G2's jungle. And it looks like they're trying to at least control the Baron side. And Exile, once again, happy taking 1v2. Does not care about Nuno whatsoever. Just wants to try and hit perks in the face every time cold. Oh, it's around mid lane as well in this game. This time around, they did not get perks at first. Then he yeah. stepped back into it. So I guess it counts, technically. I, I also think it's my fault because I said his stretching strikes were good. And that one was uh, dodged. Or missed, depending on your point of view. You're never going to hit if you don't try, Trevor. That's it. You miss every shot you don't take. That is very true. So and if you're really bad, you also miss every shot you take. So play Ezreal, then you have a lot of shots to take. And, and you can still some, miss all of them. Some of them will hit. We'll still see whether or 52% of you will be correct. Um, so far, the has been fine okay. in this game. Uh, but playing late game teamfights as Israel is not the same as the big hyper carries. Of course, there's a lot about it in these long fights. Kite back, Azir, Nunu, Israel. It just screams, guys, give us 30 seconds of team fighting where we keep just hitting you from long range. Step back. You we kill your tank first. In this case, it's going to be cold, most likely. And then after we kill that tank, we can re-engage and take down the carries. And Unicorns, as we've highlighted, is yeah. the shotgun. It's instant burst. So two opposite 
kind of teamfight comps, which is really interesting uh, to watch in this uh, game here. It makes it so fun because it comes down to execution, vision, timing, when, when you decide to engage and how you decide to engage. Because, of course, the Unicorns, they found that great fight in the mid lane. All right, so he did upgrade the Targons oh, for now, but please. he's still going right to Slory. Okay. So I'm still happy. I would have loved to see him instantly rushed, but it's fine. I get it, get the extra tankiness. I mean, it feels like we're going late again. It, it kind of feels like this is scaling. G2 still uh, have a bottom outer tower to take. They're still farming up. Despite the 2k gold lead, it's, it's becoming less and less important. As always, once we start getting towards the later stages of the game, but it's, it's going to be a while before we get there. We've actually had fairly fast games, most of them, uh, today yes. in the ULCS. As is the, the trend. Uh, Saturday games what? seem to be quicker than Friday games. Let's see what Cold and Exile can do. Perks throws down the Emperor's Divide, absolute zero. Gonna zone away all of the Unicorns. Event Horizon is decent by some time, but the Sand just don't care. White Knight comes in from behind. Forced to Proto Belt out the True Shot Barrage. Flies across oh, nothing. Oh, down. Cold is re-engaged. Perks is running for his life. This is a lone team fight. The Event Horizon fights nobody, but the Primordial Burst does. Finally, someone goes down, and it's Perks. Well, Jiju did survive the first engage here, but then because White Knight was sitting against four G2 members, he just made sure they could never regroup, and Perks came in from the side, tried to do something, and got interrupted by the Zack. He hit the, this little slingshot, knocked up Perks. He suddenly oh. was caught out. Oh, they want some more. All right, oh. Wanda can eat an orange and he'll be K. Kian and sidesteps the stretching strike as Wanda's forced to split oh. away. Totoro oh. gets the interrupt and Yon and goes down. Samux gets the kill. And once again, Unicorns of Love, they have so much engaged with this draft, they will always find the team fight. G2 tried to regroup. Perks stuck his head forward. Thought he could be the carry from the side. Look at this here. Okay, so G2 not grouped up yet. Gangplank not here. Ezreal not here either. So we get the first engage. It's on to Perks, of course. They can't lock him down. So this is what G2 wants. They, they disengage. And now they can deal some damage. But look at White Knight. 1v4 right there to the left. Make sure that they can't regroup. And Perks then wants to do something from the side. Gets interrupted. And now... Unicorns of Love can just chase towards him with all the mobility, all the CC, and then they will eventually kill him. That was actually, at first, a fine setup for G2 because they survived yes. the engage. They could deal some damage, but because of White Knight's little play down there and Perks getting interrupted, suddenly Unicorns could stick to a target. And such kudos to Totoro as well. Uh, he knocked what did out of Call of the Forge card, teleports in to set up another kill, and uh, Deficio. With that fifth kill for Exile, he has now got more kills in a single game than all of the previous weeks this year. Cold spent all of his early game time ganking for Exile, trying to get him through that laning phase, working with him. And Exile at 5, 1, and 0 with 230 bonus AP. There's now a terrifying threat. Did you saw the Zac move in towards the river? It'll be dead by the time they get there. They're paying him, but they, they can't get it. Oh! Cast the curse. Holy moly! Somebody give that! True Shot Barrage steals Baron! Unbelievable! Hold on! All of you Ezreal haters! That, that's for you! That is for every Ezreal hater! The, the smite from Cold will deal 720 damage. They could even time it with a W from Exile. Okay, if this doesn't go slow-mo, then I'm going to be very disappointed. Let's see. Fire set, HP. Yes! 738. Holy moly! Wow. That Man. was so huge! That was a great play We're actually we're completely flabbergasted. Martin and I have been speaking for years, and that single player has stunned us. We just cannot get over the True Shot Barrage. And it was set up so beautifully. 52% of you hated on Ezreal. Hated on him. We, we set it up, we, you know, we saw that coming. Nobody saw that coming. But what a great play. So G2 Esports, 4,000 gold in the lead. Baron on multiple players. And the Unicorns of Love need to use this shotgun shell attack. Oh man, Cole didn't even get to use his smite. He saw the Baron. So again, Cole's smite would deal 720 true damage. 
he saw it at 738 and then something hit it plus the all from Ezreal and it died so technically cold was fine technically you know you, you time it and say burst now plus smite and you get it most of the time but he was actually waiting for to go, to go around 700 HP before he used smite so he didn't get to use it at all because it got hit by something plus Ezreal all and then it went over to G2 right in a matter of a tiny 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 second if there's one consolidation or one thing that is good here for the unicorns of love they've got tons of initiation and one of the best ways to deal with the split push or a 131 type comp or anybody using baron initiates on a group of them right yeah how and where will unicorns need to pull back this gold deficit and try to claw back this game well let's see if g2 are committing to any of the inhib turrets uh, for now they're looking towards the last tower in the top lane we have Unicorns around to Fente. Do TP in behind Trevor. They want to fight. Janin is not there. He's in the mid lane. Where is Janin? How long will he take? That's a double TP into the red buff. This looks like it's going to fizzle. There's nobody to jump on. All right, double TP gone right now. Perks and Yang just stepped away from the top lane. Wonder did also cancel his teleport right there. Okay, okay. We're slow reset, down reset. We felt, felt the tension build, but nothing happened. Yeah, and a bottom time for Unicorns. You know, this Baron buff, 30 seconds left. It's going to run out. This game is far from over, man. We're going to get 5 million team fights. I hope so. Your statement was true. 253 bonus ability power for Exile on his Vigar. Him and the rest of the Unicorn squad have going to fend off at least most of this Baron buff. Uh, oh, careful. Further has been taken. The Sun Disk has been summoned on the mid outer tower and the inner turret bottom is the target. All right, so they try bot lane now instead of top lane. Uh, again, no TPs this time around for Unicorns of Love. Much harder for them to do any sort of engage unless Cold can connect something here. Totoro is on the side. Look at him right there, the Alistar. Yangus is zoning him away. All right, so Vent is buying some time. Here's the Forge God. Gonna get knocked backwards, looking for the initiation. Totoro headbutts Yankos away. The tower is the focus and will get taken down. Totoro's being hammered. Unbreakable will just to keep his life alive. Now with the Baron timed out, G2 continue the siege. They've oh, got three ranged minions down on the front line. The tower's going to be taken out. Unicorns cannot defend. They cannot fire the shotgun because they are not in range. Well, G2 did get an inhib turret, but will then step away. All of Unicorns are still alive. They just got poked down and had to go back. No inhib gone just yet in this game. 31 minutes into it. It was Unicorns are left setting up for Baron. They won the previous team fight, and then that insane steal happened from Yanan on the Israel, and suddenly G2 gets a bit more gold, 6k gold ahead at the moment. Let's see in terms of items. Four items on the AD carry is almost matched by Samex on his side, but he's still actually sitting on 1300 gold, so he's almost there yeah. uh, uh, to match what's happening. Mid lane as well, three and a half on Exile. Three and a half on perks. So this goal lead, a lot of it's probably going to be in the gang plank, uh, as always. Yeah, right now, Wanda is 4,000 gold ahead. insane. That is insane. So 4K of this lead for G2 is on just the top laner. That means perks is not necessarily a lot stronger than Exile. Yeah. And the AD carries are almost evenly matched as well. And I mean, at the end of the day, Unicorns, their sort of team composition is about finding that single target, about chunking it down, and then you can continue the team fight. Perks is going to use those sand soldiers to move forward. Where did Forge God oh, bounce no back? No, no flash for Exile. Cold decides to jump in. Where's White Knight trying to come in? They've already killed Wadid. White Knight and take it down. Yarnin. Unicorn might have done it. Totoro's zoning away. Perks. Yankos running for his life through the river. And somehow Wonder's nowhere to be seen. Perks gets the first of the fight for G2. And Samax takes him down. Rocket Jump is available for the reset, but he doesn't chase. I love shotgun comms. Whenever they get onto someone, they just burst them down. With deep died first, then all the engage came in from Unicorns of Love, and they got onto Jan and they got onto Perks. White Knight on this Vladimir in these fights. He's not afraid. Ghost, Flash, Proto Belt. He's getting into that backline every single time. And this Ezreal died so fast, he didn't even get to use a summoner spell. We're going to talk about him a lot this game, but here's a replay of the fight we did just got chunked down. Cole flies in. Look at White Knight here on this Vladimir. He just looks straight at the enemy to carry and there's no one who can peel for him. Nuna Slow won't do anything against a flash pool Vladimir. So he will get to Ezreal and now they also do take down perks. Unicorns of Love, despite being down in gold, we just talked about it. For the main carries, that doesn't matter because they're even in terms of gold in this game. It's mainly just his GP who's of course getting very close to full items. But the Vladimir... He can still kill the enemy to carry without full items.
Absolutely insane. Deficio, as you see the timer go past 33.23. Give me a piece of information. That's the average game time for EU LCS matches on Saturdays. Let's see how long this plays out. Because Totoro is the target of G2 Esports. Continues to run for his life. Flash is available. And that Unbreakable will get burnt through it. The Absolute Zero slows down Unicorns of Blood. No Flash for Exile. He's shut down. Chunked down as Yankos jumps forward. Now White Knight trying to be the hero. The Hemo play brings it back up to life. But there's not enough just yet. Savix needs to be a hero here. Savix needs to pull the Maravid out of the hat. But he will not be able to do it. What a turnaround here. G2 suddenly winning the fight. Exile's Flash is almost ready. But wasn't there for the actual team fight. Plus the Alistar got caught out early. Baron is alive. We know with the Nuno Azir comp, you killed this Baron so quickly. Cold, no smite on his side. Samax, full HP, yes. But he's he's the only damage dealer here. It's hard for him to do anything. And this Baron, it drops. Oh, so quickly. 5,000 HP. Samax, will he attempt to steal? The answer's no. Instantly burst down. Second Baron of the game goes to G2 Esports. And Unicorns of Love may get themselves Solitary Mountain in reply. Let's see what happens here. Unicorns of Love are not in position to fight, but they stayed in mid. Exile and White Knight, they're not here. Instant kill onto the support. And now, without flashes to get out of this Nuno ult and GP ult, Exile will get attacked and slowed down, so he dies. Oh, Unicorns of Love had such a great fight in their favor before this one, and then overstay their welcome in the mid lane when they were waiting for the top laner waiting for Exile to join them, and they get punished by G2 Esports, and now second Baron in their favor. This bot lane in it, it's open from before. I think the Mount Drake went over to Unicorns. Cole took it down. He did indeed. Uh, while we had the little replay. Let's see if G2 can get at least the last out of turret, and then once again, the way out for Unicorns is fighting. Yes. It's just fight back all Fort the time. Fortunately for Unicorns, fighting in those narrow choke points kind of helps them out. If G2 step a little too far forward, uh, White Knight throws down the Ghost to try to escape, needs to use their Sanguine Pool and does so. That means he's now out of the fight. That's the outer, uh, sorry, the inner top turret yeah. will be the next focus. And of course, as we talked about much earlier in the game, Yanko's maxing that Blood Boil second. Yep. So applies it to perks means that he can give all the way up to 120 extra AP plus, of course, attack speed adding on. We might get another fight here, but good disengage. Oh, so good from G2. They survived the shotgun shell, but at what cost? It's a fight on two fronts. Wonder takes down Exile. There's a follow-up from Perks. Totoro, Samix are down as well. The Unicorns are routed, picked up, run down, killed, and G2 are destroying the Unicorns of Love. That should be game now. They have so much damage on these turrets. They managed to disengage. Unicorns of Love suddenly couldn't do anything, and every single member just dropped that except for White Knight. He's trying 1v5. Oh, it's not going to be enough. Get shut down and kill. The first Ezreal win of the weekend goes to Hyun and G2 Esports. Steal a Baron. Steal the hopes of the Unicorns of Love. And G2 Esports, they take down the Unicorns. Very fun game, a lot of action, two different kind of comms. One comp looking for the engage and to burst, another comp looking for the disengage, and then the consistent DPS. We got to see both comps work multiple times. Engage happened, someone died, Unicorns of Love won the fight. Nobody died, and suddenly G2 got to kite back. Yep. They got to kill the first guy in the front line, and they got to win the fight. The Baron steal, though, from Yana was huge, because suddenly it wasn't Unicorns of Love pushing for turrets. It was actually G2 getting yes. a bit more gold. And then after that, of course, they won a big fight in the mid lane with two members of Unicorns of Love were missing. They were running from base and bot lane, and Unicorns managed to get caught. You're and this right. kind of describes their season so far, because they're doing a lot of things correct. There's a lot of things you're saying, wow, these guys for a team at the bottom look pretty good. Yes, there's, there's, there's flashes, there's flashes of brilliance. these one or two big mistakes, either it's an, an individual mistake or it's a team mistake, but they happen almost every game, Trevor. And then they get punished. <laughs> uh, Cold almost got oh, punished, by trying the way, to hug Wonder on stage. Wonder, he's been working out. This man is getting quite some guns. He is indeed, and he's using them in game. Yankos, not a happy smile. But Deficio, I was trying to uh, talk about like, something no, no, in you game. You can't be happy. G2 Esports managed to win this game in 36 minutes and around 50 seconds, right? 
The average game time of EU LCS Saturday games is around 34 minutes. The average game time of EU LCS games on Friday is around 46 minutes. Who knows why they take slower to close on Friday? Uh, the EU players really want to, you know, end the week, go to the bar, have some fun. And to clarify, that is the week four stats as well. Sets so no, it's only whispering. week four. Only for week four. Ah, see, I'm pretty sure. Saturday. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be close, but I'll I'll check with the Lolly Sports stats team a little bit later. Well, Deficio, this makes next week very exciting because now we've got these teams at the top of the table starting to pull away from the middle of the table. Yeah. G2 will be playing a Vitality next week. It's true. And if G2 are able to pick up a win there, it's going to close that top of the table gap between a couple of squads. Fnatic are up there, Giants are up there, you know, uh, uh, G2 getting close. It's it's going yeah. to be very, very interesting. Misfits losing two games yes. this week here. So they're obviously dropping a bit down in the standings. Splice went one and one, so they're not catching the top team at the no. moment. But they can also climb a little bit away from the H2Ks and the UOLs of oh, the bottom of the table. They're pretty far down and pretty far away at the moment, at least. Uh, sadly for Unicorns of Love, ended up losing the crucial fights in this game and therefore couldn't get the win. They couldn't. Uh, we do have one more question for you uh, over on LOL Esports. The Twitter, it is for the player of the game, of course. Uh, we'll announce the winner on the EU LCS post-game lobby, but you need to tell us who you think deserves it. Is it Wonder, Yankos, or Perks? Now, I would have voted for Hyanin, but he's not on the selection. <laughs> the, the analyst desk will actually be picking that up. And fortunately for us, the first Ezreal win of the weekend is getting ready on stage with Law. A lot there we go. Did. They, we're going to talk to him, going to talk about Ezreal and maybe ask a few more questions. I know Law actually wanted to know more about that. Well, go ahead then. Well, why don't you toss it then, Deficio? Should I toss you it? You should. Well, guys, for more on G2's win, let's send it over to Law here, who's sitting down with their bot lane. <laughs> Thank you very much, Deficio. Indeed, I'm here with the bot lane of G2 after their win after, uh, against Unicorns of Love. I'm sorry, guys, how are you feeling today about the, uh, the game? Where did uh, you can go? Because you were mentioning you were kind of sad about it. How come? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty disappointed from our performance right now, like, especially me, because, like, my performance on, on stage, like, especially this week, uh, it even is worse. So, like, I'm pretty disappointed right now, so I really want to just rewatch my game and then fix the problems right now. Yeah, but still, you guys end up the week with a 2 and 0. I mean, it's rather good compared to the start you had. Yernan, how are you feeling about the team? Do you feel like you're getting stronger every week? Mm, I'm not sure. I mean, this week was pretty disappointing for us. I think both those these two games this week we could have lost. And... Uh, it's pretty much being what it needs to step up a bit, I think. And we've been playing pretty bad on stage and poorly this week, especially. So we just need to step up for next week. And then uh, I think we will have a lot of easier games. Yeah, and still you have a week to prepare for that. I want to ask you both a question because you both came from Rocket last year. How is it different uh, concerning training, organization in G2? What did? Uh, especially like G2 was like king of the Euro for two years. Like it was, and it's like, really great organization like uh, our CEO is like Carlos how can you like not like this organization you know and then yeah I mean from our screams like we are not for performing like 100% like scream like we're performing really bad on stage so I don't know I don't know what's the problem right now but uh, I really want to like fix it right now I I'm really like motivated to fix it. Do you, do you feel like, in a way, you might feel some pressure concerning, well, the fact that G2 was very successful uh, over the last few years? Do you have to continue the legacy in a way, Yanan? I mean, that's the goal, obviously, for us as a team to uh, to win the like to win the split and do good at Worlds and everything. So, I don't think we feel the pressure of it. Mm -hmm. It's just like more disappointing that we're not improving in the speed that we want to improve, basically. Okay, and we're going to focus more about the game now because next week we will be on 8.3. The patch will change. Hopefully, we will see new things in the game. What are you expecting to see, Wadid? Uh, I don't know. It's, it feels like every day is like pre-season because there's a lot of changes during the season, so it's kind of confusing. But this is kind of the life of the League of Legends pro player, so we have to adapt it and then just looking for best picks. And then it's like... BO1, so we have to find out it, like, anyways, so, I, I don't know, I didn't read even uh, 8.3, so, yeah. Okay, I is it confusing for you to go to BO1 this year? I mean, last year was best of three. Uh, is it changing anything for you, Yanan? 
It's a bit different, yeah, because best of three, you have to prepare a bit more, I feel like. I have to prepare for both sides, both red and uh, blue. Okay. And now you only have to prepare for one side, so it's a bit like... If you play bad, for example, like I think me and Buddy played bad the first game, then you have always a chance to like show that you actually can play ba like better this, the, the next game or the third game, you know? So I missed that a bit, but yeah, I mean it's uh, it's fun for uh, it's fun with best ones as well, I think. But I don't know. Yeah, and you'll have time to learn with this new system. But it's all for us on this side of the stage. Thank you very much, guys, for joining me today. And for the moment, we're gonna send it to Dracos and his guests for the EU LCS post game lobby.